um, today I'm going to share this. Um, I'm going to share this tissue paper. What do you call it? It's it's toilet paper or tissue paper over a stamp, which you stipple with water and glue to get this this effect. I don't know if you can see this very well to get this kind of effect. It looks odd while it's still in the paper, but once it's all cut out, it gives you a good 3D image to stick onto your cards. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it done, and I've given it a go. These are what I've got so far. First of all, when I've seen it done, I've seen somebody do it just with water. But this is what you get. You get a separation. So I tried it again just with toilet paper. And this time I put glue, just added a little bit of glue in my water, mixed it in and stippled it over my stamp. And that has stuck together nicely, nice and firm. So I'm going to show you how to do this technique. And uh, and then at the end, we'll make a card with one, you know, one this one that I've previously done. Um, see where it goes, shall we? I'm going to use pink ink stamp, this rook and roll. I, I do love my large blackbirds, whether they be rooks, crows or whatever. So I'm gonna we're gonna play with him today. And uh, I've got my little pile of tissue paper. You only need about five or six, five or six layers, it's plenty um, to do this. So you'll need, you'll need your glue um, and a little pot of water, which I've got with water here. I shall put some glue in there. Um, once I've done it, what I'll do is I'll show you how to colour this one. Uh, once I've coloured it, I'm going to add a little tiny bit of shimmer on top by putting some of this gilding polish just over the top, just to bring the wings up. And... Uh, and then I'm going to build it into a little card, just a little card, a nice little five and a quarter inch by six and a quarter inch. A um, little bit of background, put some trees in the background and we'll, we'll put him on and, and see where it goes. Right then, so let's get started. Let's move them out of the way first. Got your stipple, get a stipple brush if you, the stiffer brush the better. A good stipple brush should do it. Right, so let's put that up there out of the way. First of all, let's put some... I'm just going to squeeze some glue. You don't need an awful lot. Mine comes out really skinny, so it looks like I'm putting a lot in, but I'm not. A little bit of your glue in your water. That's it. There. Mix that in with your brush. So you've got your water and glue mixed, you're ready to go. It, it, I mean, you can do it just with water, but I felt it, I, I just didn't feel it was, it didn't stay together so well. It's not, just doesn't look so good. So that's me glue and me water. Let's get my stamp and It's really easy to do. Simply just place your stamp down. My desk is covered in a silicon mat. If you don't want to make a mess, then obviously put something down first. And quite simply, get your toilet paper. It doesn't matter if it's got patterns in it. You won't see that. If it's if it's like that kitchen paper I showed you earlier. Um, not the best idea because it does actually show through. Well, some of the pattern shows through. It's got stripes on it, blue stripes. You don't want that. Preferably just plain white. If it's got patterns embedded into it, that's fine. Embossed into it, that's fine. They'll soon get stippled out. So I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to wet my brush. Get it. You can get it quite wet. Um, <laughs> limiting myself here a little bit, but there you go. Right, okay. And then just simply get that wet 
and stipple all the way around it, around the outside of it, like that. So you get every little detail in between his legs, his, his feet, right round his fur. I don't know how well it's picking up on the camera, but you can see that he is. If I really dab that down on me, Matt, you should be able to see it. Right now, I'm going to concentrate on trying to. Just by just by pressing down, so you get an air bubble. You'll get air bubbles come across. I need to try and get those out. That's it. Just ease them along. Just go from one side to the other. Slowly dabbing and pushing that tissue into those details. You can do this with, with many stamps. I did try it with a, a stamp. It was a Francis Reed stamp, but it had got details over the whole stamp, everything, and it was just too much. So it was it was hard to pick out what there was on there. But if it's a a, a singular, you know, um, character or something like this, it does work out really nicely. I think that's enough for that. And then you just simply build your layers up, like so. Wet your brush again. As I say, with having that little squeeze of glue in there, it does help to stick your layers together. You don't want it falling apart. Once you've made, you know, you make a nice card and it goes and falls apart on you. It's not really what you want, is it? Sit round his feet, in between his feet, in between his tail. The thing with this, it does take quite a long time to dry. I mean, I was hoping it might have dry overnight, but it took about three days. But I had got it on a flat surface rather than on a surface, you know, that was open underneath it. So. If you're going to dry it out, it might be ideal to put it on, on a rack, some kind of a wire rack or anything that it's so the air can get underneath it. It will dry a lot easier that way. That's it. And push all that detail through. That's it. Next layer. If you get a little rip here and there, it don't really matter because you're going to, you're going to fill it back in again anyway. I perhaps had a bit too much water on that last one, actually. So this is all you're going to do is just keep stippling away. See those details popping through. As your layers build, you won't see you won't see the details as much, but once you turn it over, it looks amazing. I do quite love doing this now. This is my this is only my second attempt to be fair. So I want to see how he looks once I've got him on my card and see how 3D he looks. Keep going, so that's that three layers. You can use kitchen roll, but like I say, if you do, try and use plain kitchen roll if you can, not one that's got a pattern in it because it, it might show through, depending on what, what, what it is you're actually um, making. I mean, with a crow or a raven, should I say or a rook even, <laughs> is going to be coloured dark. But if you're doing something that's going to be coloured light, then you don't really want a kitchen towel pattern showing through, do you, really? You see, so you just keep going to build your layers up. Make sure it all sticks down. It's still quite wet. So let's go with another layer. This is my fifth layer now. 
shouldn't really need much more after this. I'll, I'll perhaps go one more after this. Yes, it between his feet again. You see, he starts to look lost now, but all your detail is on the underside, and it's hard to see it. But as soon as you put your colour on, it just it's amazing, it, it just all pops out, and it's a lovely. And then, say, finishing it off with that gilding polish just makes it it's lovely. I'll show you one that I've done. Right, I'm going to do a last layer. I'm going to do six. And then I'm going to call it a day with that. Just press down nice and firm, firmly but gently. Push it down firmly, but don't rub it or anything like that. Just straight up and down. Because if you do rub it or drag your brush, you will tear the paper. Like I say, not that it's a massive issue because you can just stick more on top and carry on. But you don't want to be doing that all the time, so... That's it. So then with that, I will just leave that to one side to dry out. Let me just turn it over to show you. And there's all your detail. You see that once you've dabbed it all on that side, you think there's nothing there, but turn him over and all your details there. So we're going to put that to one side to dry and put my stamp away. And then what you do next is quite, I mean, like I say, that's the, tip, that's the kitchen one. It all just falls apart, look. That's with no glue in it. That's rubbish. Rubbish. Um, I did try, as you can see, I did try inking the stamp first. That was with Versifying Claire. Um, and then I put the water on, but it doesn't really pick up anything. Um, and then another one I tried, I just I just coloured it in once it was done. I did it from, from clear like this and it came up amazing. So I'm going to show you now to colour it in. All I did was I chose some colours. We'll have the black. We'll have the blue. Maybe a bit of purple. Don't think you really need to. You've probably got enough on your brushes. Unless you wash them every time you use them. You've probably got enough in your brushes to get the colours that, you, that you'd like. Um, you probably don't need to load up with ink, so I'm just going to try it with what's on the brushes or the ink that's on the brushes already. And as you can see, that detail. Immediately starts to pop up. See how that's working? I will carry on. And I'm going to go with a little bit of black on top just to darken him. Try 
and get right into those bits that are flat as well. detail in his feet uh, a bit more purple on his face that's it so you can see from it there's probably enough you probably have enough ink in your brushes I mean if you want to load it up with more ink you can do that's entirely up to self preference really I'm just using what's on my brushes. Plus it'll have to clean my brushes out a bit, so. <laughs> that's it, black, blue and purple. Because that's the kind of colors that shine through, right. So we've got that. Let me show you a closer up at that. And that's what we've got so far. You see that lovely detail coming through. Dirty fingers, Ange. Back all over my fingers now. Right, now his eyes disappeared. I can't see his eye anymore. So I am just going to draw that eyeball back in. And I'm going to use Biro. I would advise whatever colouring in you do, what just do it so that if whatever if, it, if it's pens or whatever they're not just really wet pens because they're just going to wet your tissue again you're better off using a, a dry brush if you are going to use paint however i would suggest you use um a spray sealant first perhaps do a couple of layers of a spray sealant first seal it make it waterproof and then you then you can probably paint over it so i'm going to just paint his eye in there and I am going to put a bit of white in, whether that will take or not, I don't know, but let's... There you go. It needs to have an eye. Then, I'm going to take my gilding polish, scoop a little bit of that up to, to the edge there, get a little bit of that on my... Not too much, need a tiny, tiny bit. And I'm just going to skim over him with this gilding polish because it actually does make those wings shine. There you go. Let me see that now. Shiny. Shiny bird. A bit more on. Yay! There you go. Let's give him some sparkle. A bit more colour in his beak, I think. Right, it can pop back in its top. So that's your Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Polish, and that is the Silver Dream that I've just used there, just to polish over the top of them wings, just to get that lovely shiny effect. Beautiful, beautiful. So now cutting him out, I've got one before that I've cut out before rather than you painfully sitting watching me cut out, literally cut just on the inner edge of that, that outline that you can see that's bumped, that's raised, you don't need that raised bit, you're going to cut it off and you're going to end up with this, in fact I will show you, I'll show you some of it. You see how I'm going inside that raised edge? I don't know if you can see that, but I'm cutting on the inside of that raised edge. 
and I'm trying to pick up all his little details, his feathers and everything. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I think he looks nice because it's all nice and spiky. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go too, just to give you a rough idea. Up to his beak. So see, I'm going inside that, that ridge, do it on the inside of that ridge. Like that. And then obviously there's a bit of fussy cutting around all his hair and all the rest of it. You might not, you might want to cut some of them off up to the individual depends what stamp you decide to use but uh, I'm just going to keep that on there for now but yeah just to show you that I've cut that uh, built up ridge off to catch some of his sticky out scruffy hair No, actually, I should have saved hair. I should say feathers. He's a bird. He's got feathers. He hasn't got hair. So, there you go. Just to give you a rough idea. It's quite simple to do it cuts nice and easy there you see it's totally flat you haven't got that I can bother with the little bits you've got rid of that bit that's built upwards so he's now nice and flat that one I'll tidy up properly at another time but for now I'll use this one that I've pre-cut uh, again I did the gilding, the gilding polish on him and whatnot so I'm going to build a nice little card now to put him on just a small one some extra tissues right need a bit of torn paper build a bit of scenery set off some Trees right over there in the background. Um, just use this green again, I think. Nice little hills in the background. Oh, I should have done that the other way around, actually. Anyway, never mind. Bit of detail there. There's some little hills and hillocks here and there. He's going to need a post or something to sit on, so. Let's just do that. Right, where's my one that I was going to use? Sit him on there. So the trees can go about here somewhere then. Trees. I'm going to stamp these in, I think, um, morning mist. I can look far away. Um, ah, there it is. I'd normally get my big stamping platform out, but just for these little stamps, I shan't bother. On there. Bit of background trees. Put this on there like that. It. 
more down there. Don't know if that'll work. Second breath, you know that'll do. I'm not getting anything off that, am I? We've got some trees now in the background. <laughs> more trees Perhaps put the bigger one in the foreground there, shall we? Move that one in, dark green. Do that one in rainforest. Just put this one here in the foreground. Anyway, well, that'll do. A bit more ground just there. Draw a little post on there. Just a quick hand draw like that. I'm going to quickly paint that in as well. Paint brush. I think I've got a bit of brownish paint mixed up already. I'll now use that. The cardstock I've used is it, it's already it was already coloured cardstock. It was just a piece of multicoloured. So I use that just try just for a bit of quickness. something for him to sit on.
then there's a wire going across it a little loop and the cable like it's a bit of a fence or something actually I've got a bit of silver in there I have to make myself a lot, there you go. Let's give that a bit of colour. Let that bit water in. So that and across there like that. Okay. Put in there like that. That's it. And then he I think I'm gonna glue his feet but put pads under his body. A little bit of shadow under my trees. Uh, do we come in this way? I think. Okay, now I'm going to stick a couple of sticky pads on my bird. I've bitten all my nails off. I've got no nails left. I've been watching horror movies and I end up nibbling my nails. Terrible for it, I am. Right, and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on his feet. I shall glue his feet down and then the rest can stand off the page. There he is, my little toilet paper crow. A rook. I'll get it right. I'll get told off. I'll get it right. He's a rook. Let's glue that to there. That's it. Just a little card, just some 
the main thing was to show you how to do the toilet paper technique, the toilet paper embossing technique. Is it emboss or is it a deboss actually? It's probably more more a deboss than an emboss. And there you go. A nice simple card with a nice simple technique. But you get such a lovely all that texture, all that lovely texture on there. And there you go. Toilet paper embossing with a stamp. Okay. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.